Day two of the league starts right now. It's me and Rose taking you through the first game of the day. And it's a big day two. First homestand a little bit later on. The first one since 2020 in Arlington, Texas. The Texas showdown is going to be a good one. I'm super excited to get into this match today because we're also seeing teams we haven't seen yet. Rose, mm -hmm. Spitfire, Shock, they're up next. They are. So we got a chance to see the San Francisco Shock yesterday, and so we'll talk about them in just a little bit. But let's talk about the London Spitfire because this is their debut for the league for 2022, and they're packing some heat with this roster right here. We've got Hottie, who is a player that is known for those main tanks. We also have a full rookie support line here with Admiral and Landon. And so it's going to be great to see what kind of impression they can make for this very first match. Yeah, and London Spitfire, and in fact, the shock about many different looks over their time within the Overwatch League. London Spitfire, probably the just like the biggest contrast, I suppose, like <laughs> winning a championship and then forming the London Spitfire out of mainly at this point uh, European talent. And last year wasn't really their year at all. They did claim one game, but this year with those rookies coming in from contenders and another British player. Backbone, shout out. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a whole new look for them. And you know what? We always say brand new game, brand new start, yada, yada. But this actually could be the turning point for the Spitfire. They have Shaq, Sparker, Backbone as their DPS. They also have Poco sitting on the bench right now with Hardy. But this team on your screen right now, you know them, you love them. They've had some major changes too. We've already seen them play. And oh my word, are they clean. Proper's DPS talents already putting on a showcase. Absolutely. Proper yesterday made an incredible first impression. And one of the biggest reasons the San Francisco Shock were really able to pop off is because Proper got the support he needed and Kaluj also proved himself yesterday as the only tank player available for the San Francisco Shock. Very, very much looking forward to seeing this roster back in action today because, Jaws, I still feel like while San Francisco Shock went above people's expectations yesterday against the Paris Eternal, the team still has such a big legacy to live up to that the previous players have left for that team. And it was a small sample size. This first quarter is still going to be a very important litmus test for the team of the San Francisco Shock. Yeah, you sum that up perfectly. Like, Shock need to be able to carry on that legacy. Like, of course, they have Violet still. Proper, Kilo, and Sam in the roster. A lot of big names from O2 Blast. A team that has just, like, just thrown talent at the Overwatch League. Mm -hmm. Teams like Runaway, Element Mystic, O2 Blast, like, my word, the amount of players that have once been on those teams and now make it to the league is extraordinary. Lijiang Tower is the first map of the day. I'm hoping we go to four maps minimum, ideally. Uh, New Queen Street would be a fun one to cast. I think push as a game mode, extremely chaotic. Kind of like control in that way, where there's always like a little summit going on, a little skirmish here and there, and a lot of action happens very quickly. Let's go to Night Market, Day Market. We made that joke yesterday. <laughs> I'm not going to make it again. That's okay. It's still up for debate. I feel like what we're going to actually end up calling this one. But let's take a look at the compositions for both of these teams. The London Spitfire, as we mentioned, Hottie, very much known for those main tank characters. Very well known for Reinhardt, very well known for Winston. So seeing Hottie in the mix for the London Spitfire, I am expecting either of those heroes to be chosen and to be kind of the centerpiece for the London Spitfire's comp. San Francisco Shock, on the other hand, they showed us a lot of different flavors for their play style yesterday and proper on the Soldier 76. We've seen how crazy these angles can really get from these soldiers. Yeah, I think this is going to be more of a classic comp for this specific point on Li Xiang. It makes the most sense. There's so many off angles you can take. You can control the mega health pack if you're the soldier and you have the healing station. I did see proper hover the soap. Maybe we'll see a little bit of that soon. Nice anti-grenade onto backbone. Did he pop the block that early? My word. San Francisco Shock starting off the game strong with the Admiral falling. And that'll be the Shock containing the point. Now, this is a problem for the London Spitfire. They have Hardy to use as a shield. Sparker does want to off angle, but they need to get to the point ASAP. That's where their comp thrives. Absolutely. May able to block off all of those choke points with that wall. 
you really want to be able to stabilize and kind of just hunker down on the point. But you can see that the London Spitfire just really want to try to take back control. But Finn, right now with those antis, are making it so difficult to do so. Yeah, if you get hit with the anti, you, you can't really rotate at the end of the day. Sam, Violet, just trying to duel and trying to contest for as long as possible. They do actually end up letting the point go. Hardy gets native, but puts up a shield, so he's fine. Nice wall to stop Kalush from getting a little bit of healing, but when you're on the outside and you're an Arna, you can just dip through those two doors. It's not a problem. We are nearing a tactical visor, maybe nano visor, in fact, as Finn just earned that. However, he does throw it on the Winston. Why not? Lamp goes down, so does Landon. Finn falls, but with the pressure on the point of Backbones, Ice Block already used. That's an easy kill for Violet and the San Francisco Shock now. All they need to do is contest and actually find the flip. Wow. Lone Spitfire, Hardy and Avril didn't really want to contest. They want to just back off and go again. I'm surprised they didn't stay there because Avril could speed Lander back and maybe Backbone could get back in time too. I think that was the biggest factor there. Wait, Hardy's just in. Okay, okay. I, I guess without the team. There you go. Gotta go. Speed boost, visor, okay, and now the rest of the shock are isolated on the outside. You don't want to be there proper, hiding around that statue. Spark is not in on the point just yet. The blizzard comes through, is now the London Spitfire gaining control, but an anti nade from Finn does finish off backbone. A good beat, not negated by the bubble. Hardy can now set up for the shatter. He goes a little bit wide, completely around the rest of the San Francisco Shock, and another unreal bio grenade from Finn carrying these fights. And the Shock that whole time had control of the point. And London, yeah, they decided to send in that attack visor and Hardy first up, but the Shock were able to na uh, navigate that so well. It's all about Finn. But we didn't get a chance to talk about Finn too much yesterday because the flashy stuff has really been coming out of proper Sam and Kaluge. But as we've seen from other teams, that Anna can be such an important factor in some of these cops. But that could be big. Yeah, you don't really expect that. Just <laughs> a May on the flank holding the angles. Proper's going to get back to the point so quickly, or get back to an angle so quickly. Nice sleep onto Hardy so he can't get the pin kill on the supports. There's the blade from Sam. Finn's got the nano, but might not need it since Backbone is already dead. He save it for the next fight. Although Finn does end up falling. Now they've only got Violet's healing to go, and Sam is low. No health packs around. Well, that many, but it won't heal him up to full. Hardy and Avril take control of the point as the pin kill will finish off Kaluge. Nice little round there from London Spitfire, taking out Finn that early and negating the effects of that Nano, all for the better. However, Proper does come back, finish off Hardy, but the London Spitfire still control the point and going to be able to stall for a long time too. London Spitfire do need to start focusing down Proper, but it's going to be very difficult to do so. And they need to touch. What happened? Someone's got to touch. You can't keep doing this. Avril needs to be able to get on there and at least contest for a short while. Nano onto the soldier. Visor available. Hardy doesn't stand a chance. Let goes of the shadow, but yeah, it's done. That was it. Hardy, desperation shadow at the very end. The London Spitfire just very unwilling to touch the point and contest for just a couple more seconds before their team end up getting back. There's been a couple of times now where they just let the point go and it feels like maybe you could have skirmished a little bit, just duck in and out of cover, just to maintain control and build up that percent. The shock, they take it, and we move on to Gardens. London Spitfire definitely looked in most of those team fights to not really know what they wanted to do. Uh, proper here, you can just see the angles that Proper was able to shoot from. And oh my gosh, those Helix rockets as well. You can see how much damage those are able to do. Yeesh. Yeah, going down there as Hardy is detrimental to what they really want to do, which is to kind of just hold the point, right? Maybe a little bit too aggro. All right, same kind of comps. No shot. And again, I like the comp from the London Spitfire if they can control that space around the point. A straight icicle from Backbone is going to be rather annoying for Popper. Has to kind of watch out. There's the wall. He can chew through it. Shouldn't be a problem. But all the meanwhile, yeah, Backbone was looking one way, trying to contest Proper, and his backline gets dove on. Landon and Hardy fight the dust. Kaluge going low, but the San Francisco Shock are going to control the point. That's the thing with these comps that make you look 15 different ways at once, Rose. If Backbone is looking at Proper, trying to attack him to make sure Proper can't just run over the team, your backline's going to get dove on, and that wall can be so helpful to stop Monkey getting anywhere. 
Cropper is so good at playing as a solo agent as well. And so even focusing down Proper makes it very difficult. Whether you're going to throw a backbone May wall to stop Proper's shots or you're going to turn the Brine Shield around, you do have something else looking at you from another direction. It is very, very tough to choose what to look at. All right, closing in on the Blizzard for Backbone. Just needs to hit another couple of left clicks. You've got to be careful with Violet. Send you in the drink. You're never going to live it down. Nano available, and it's been rather normal to give that Nano over early to the Genji or even to the Soldier to build up that visor, but Proper's already got his. Nano visor in a couple of seconds. There it is. They run past the window. The wall's going to be good enough for the time being, but they just chew through Admiral's health bar. Hardy gets the pin onto Kaluj and the kill to follow up. But bada bing, bada boom, fighter from one end, prop from the other. There's no way you're escaping that sandwich. Hardy falls. They use the blizzard in that fight on top of it. The London Spitfire not in a good spot for next fight. Oh my gosh, that nano visor. We have noticed how much damage Soldier can do to a Rhine Shield or a Maywell, but they just got deleted. There was nothing to be able to save the London Spitfire there. And even though Landon is playing the Baptiste that does have that immortality field, it just gets depleted in a few seconds if you're able to take that out of the sky. And you're right, London Spitfire right now, they don't really have a whole lot to be able to walk in on this point with, and it's last fight. Oh. They need the sustain. Hardy's going in. There's the blade. The visor comes out from Sparker. Violet's caught off in the sidelines. He's going to be able to trap Finn in that building, scared to poke his head out in case it gets taken off. Sam uses the blade, finds two, and Hardy follows up with a shatter on the primal raging Winston. And now they finally have control. Without that Lucio, they had no beat. The shock weren't able to do much. Although saying that, they come back in, use the beat, hit three. There's the boom, ever so close, going off the edge. Sparker luckily uses his legs to get back on. Proper ends up finishing him off though, sends him to a hospital, and the San Francisco shock are way more than willing to start this fight and maybe end it here. Admiral used the beat to try and keep the rest of London alive, but it isn't going to be enough. And just like that, the San Francisco shock will claim that map one in record fashion. Wow, that was unbelievably quick. Super quick. London Spitfire definitely struggled in that very first map to put their game plan into action. Spitfire, I think, still were running with an incredibly good composition. We haven't seen a whole lot of Reinhardt. We didn't see a whole lot yesterday, but Reinhardt is one of those oh, heroes no. that really enables you to do a bunch with that shield, unless you're against proper, in which case, unfortunately, that shield uh, does get deleted. Man. I wonder if we'll see Poco come in if they want to change up the tank roll. We'll have to wait and see, of course. We're going to jump to a break. Don't go anywhere. I can build it up next.
doesn't strike twice, has never met the San Francisco Scott. Some of the most hardcore carry performances that I've ever seen. Just a depth of talent on their roster that can't be denied. I mean, what more can you ask for the shot? This is going to be a wild ride. Violet is cracked. Whoa. He's out of his mind. I say that justice. Okay. <laughs> that pace with everything right oh, now. Jesus Three. Christ, dude. Sam is deadlifting right now, actually. Finish is doing so much. Cleans it up like DPS and Yardo. San Francisco has cemented themselves as the greatest team in Overwatch. Welcome back. If that didn't give you enough hype for this series, or the shock, to be fair, this season, I don't know what will. The Spitfire are a map down currently, but the San Francisco Shock, uh, you know, they could slip up, maybe, just maybe, but I know who's not slipping right now, Rose. We have another deadlift, or almost deadlift, from proper. 14 final blows out of the 29 on Ilios. Yeah, it's incredible that we've uh, seen Nick, a few have, DPS uh, players at this point get near though. deadlifts. Nero yesterday, as well as, of course, taking a look at proper. Proper's definitely one of the players to be looking out for on the San Francisco Shock, but it's not just Proper, it's the entire team that's really working together in order to make these massive plays happen. But Proper's gonna have to be a big target for the London Spitfire to really get back into this series right now. Still gonna be hard to do though, as Proper has so much self-sufficiency with the heroes that he chooses to play. Yeah, and his hero pool's been quite vast already. We've seen some soldiers, some tracers, some Genji, some Reaper. Like, there's a lot this guy can play to an exceptional level. London haven't made any substitutions either, Rose. We're still seeing Hardy. So, more Ryan, more Winston, probably on the table as we go into Eichenwelder as our next map. Now, Kaluj, we talked to him a little, uh, a little bit about him earlier on, if we look at the tank line of the London Spitfire. And... It, he had a lot of question marks above his head. Is he going to be able to perform in this, mm -hmm. like, one high pressure, high stress environment of the Overwatch League and a rookie stepping into tier one? And he kind of put silences on a lot of the doubters that thought maybe he won't do as well as his counterparts that got brought onto the team this year. Kaluj also does have a lot on his shoulders being the only tank player. And so we need to see a lot of flexibility from him. We also need to see a lot of just team leadership come out from this player. And I think he see, exceeded a lot of expectations yesterday with his proficiency in his tank play, as well as just how cohesive a unit San Francisco Shock played overall. Indeed, and please, just please, Give us Orissa. No. No. Come on. I just want to see Orissa. <laughs> just like, give me a whole lot. We saw ho some Hog yesterday, which I never thought we'd see. I know. Just some Orissa, please. And some Sojin. There'll be one meta at some point that we see both of those characters, I'm almost positive. London Spitfire running the same kind of thing. Running the May, the Soldier, and the Reinhardt. Kluge on the Winston. Can probably get a shot. No, he cannot. Unlucky. I don't think anybody falls for those nowadays, but I mean, it's always worth trying. Yeah, you gotta try for it, and I think it's also a great scouting mechanism. If you're able to get a really nice view as to what the defending team is doing, can always affect how you move forward with your game plan. But Hadi holding this corner really nicely with the Reinhardt, and so running a similar oh. composition, well, that also works. Wow, that sucks. Uh, don't know how that happened. I guess a little bit of extra damage in the fire strike. Two fire strikes available to Ryan nowadays, which is pretty cool. So it's just a big reset. I mean, it's the quickest reset possible, so I wouldn't be too stressed about it. Plus, Finn, 50, uh, 56% towards the Nano already. Like, just put on Kaluj once again, have him jump in and cause some havoc in the back line. They're going to find Backbone. Oh, and no block maybe either. A beautiful nade from Finn. Immortality forced. It goes down. So does Landon. And the San Francisco shock, just like that, they find Backbone once again in a situation he doesn't want to be in. Oh, oh give it to no. him! You see that little smirk on his face, dude? <laughs> just a double, like, oh, you know, Lucio deserves some of that too. Landon Spitfire, the lose point. Hey, shock, get the payload going. Shock, do get the payload going. Let's watch this replay, though, of proper. Because we got to see what happened. Backbone oh, took a Helix so rocket close. and then didn't have 
the time to be able to react to get the ice block out. So, unfortunate quick take down there, and it did allow the San Francisco Shock to snowball onto this first point, but also... What is, what is oh, this? No. Oh, no. A little cheekiness. No, no, Problem no, is the no, gate's no. not open, Rose, so it's a little bit difficult for him to get a lot of damage down. They know where he is at this point. So the rest of his team needs to be able to push this payload through the gate. Or Prop could just do this. The lamp's already been used, but Kaluj does die. Someone's going to have to deal with Prop, and it looks like the army has come to kill him. However, Violet also falls. This is the perfect spot for London Spitfire to hold. They have a lot of ults to hold these small choke points. Visor, you have Blizzard, you have Shadow coming up, and the beat. Sam also falls. And uh, Nano from Finn, I think, went on somebody. Uh, maybe Kaluj, but it's now gone. Maybe it was just able to top off some ultimate percentage, but we're seeing Sparker go ahead and hit the, the pack visor. Sparker in the pub. Like everybody from London Spitfire should be after this. Don't know where I was going with that. Hardy's in trouble. Whoops, stays. He had that shatter. Doesn't really want to use it. Does extra damage if you're close to him, but now nah, let's be real. 50 HP, you might lose it at that point. Sam with the blade it does end up saving it as well as that visor. Quite a quick and clean team fight. Backbone's blizzard in these situations. You thought you'd be able to use it in these chokes and pin everybody down, like freeze everybody up. But like the shock have uh, so much mobility, it's very easy for them to get out of the blizzard. So it's a good ultimate, but who are you actually going to pin down with it? Not really anybody. When you have uh, Lucio and Violet, you can definitely just speed boost your way away. And this, oh, this is not looking good for Kaluj. Where was Violet then? No idea. Good question. He's somewhere. Maybe on the payload. They still have the blade and the visor. Definitely. Or the high ground. Yeah. They are going to try and assault it, but uh, realistically, against all of that damage on the high ground, not really where you want to be. Nice fire strike. Finished off Sam. And still, the San Francisco shock. Just waiting for this nano. If it was nano blade or nano visor, is going to be the order of the day. And. With London Spitfire holding the high ground and also having a beat, it could be a little bit more hard to execute than the Shock realize. It's going to be difficult if the London Spitfire are holding high ground because where is Proper going to surprise the team with this tactical visor? Finn does have to get that nano boost online to be super potent, but nice rotations oh. coming through here from the London Spitfire. -hoo -hoo. There's the blizzard, there's the shatter, hits Sam as he pulls out the blade. Finn's gone, Sam deleted. The beat from Violet wasn't enough to save him. Spark is now going to go for the flank. Meanwhile, by the way, Violet has been pushing payload. Violet does manage to escape using that little hole in the wall down there. You can see in the bottom right. Two minutes to go. The Shock have the Nano Blade available. They did force out not only the Blizzard, the Shatter, but also that beat from the London Spitfire. So now is go time. Now you expect them to win this next fight. Still going to be hard for Proper to find an angle, though. Even if he does get the Nano Boost to go for a Nano Tactical Visor, London Spitfire is just going to pull the trigger first. Yeah, Proper is dead. Loses the Visor on top of it. That Nano Visor not doing so hot. Sparker pulled his. Didn't even have Nano to back him up, but they still managed to delete Proper. That fight that I said, yeah, they're set to win this one. Nah, it goes a little bit wide. A minute and 20 seconds to go, and London have a firm grasp of this payload right now. Oh, not quite so much. There's the Primal Rage. Can he get any environmentals potentially on Backbone? <gasps> Goes into the block, but it might have been a little bit too late. No, it wasn't. Somehow survives. They do trade Landon for Kaluj, and the Shock are going to be happy with that because there's a lack of healing now for the Spitfire. But with the spawns being so close, the only thing they can really do here is push the payload up a little more. Hottie can also just hold the Reinhardt shield and stop the San Francisco Shock from ingressing onto the point. So they do have to wait for Kaluj, but Finn with a big opening pick onto Admiral. And now it's go time for the San Francisco Shock. That healing station providing a lot of said healing as the window gets opened up on the right-hand side. Spark is going to use that to high efficiency, but not when the rest of the Shock can jump on you. That's the problem. These mob mobile heroes can just dominate Batiste when he hides behind that window. Sam with a beautiful 3k, 2k, sorry. Uh, the lamp is still in the kill feed. They do manage to capture second. One minute and 50 seconds remains, and the Shock slowly but surely are making their way through the map. And contrasting this to Li Shang Tower, this is a, a fairly slow pacing for them right now. 
It is. We gotta give a lot of credit to the London Spitfire. They whittled through a huge time bank with their defense on that second point that San Francisco Shock realistically have two chances here. They're coming up on a bunch of ultimates. They will have the nano boost, the dragon blade, as well as the tactical visor and the sound. It just, you know what? They're gonna have a full slate of ultimates here. San Francisco Shock are just waiting for those ults to come online, but Adi's not gonna let that happen. Nice shadow, nice beat, nice block from Hattie, blo blocking the beat with his shield so they can finish off Kaluge. There's the blade, the nano isn't going to get applied, and it, once again, Sam's blade rather dull in the face of the London Spitfire as the shot can get wiped, and now they have 50 seconds to tussle with. And they have a nano blade, and they've got a primal rage. San Francisco Shock should have been able to get a lot done there with those two DPS ultimates. And of course, the sound barrier on top of that. But now, 40 seconds Ooh. left, and Sparkers hit the trigger again. Oh, no! Tragic. They do trade soldier for soldier. Primal Rage, though, a little bit further away from his team than he wants to be. Sub 100 HP. Nice pin once again from Hardy. Hardy is having an exceptional game on the Reinhardt. At least where the map calls for it. Point A and point C, much better for this kind of comp from London. 15 seconds remains as Shock needs to be able to touch the points. They do have Kalu switching over to a Reinhardt of his own, going mano a mano. However, Hadi is so close to that shatter, he will build it up in this fight. The Nano onto Kalu. He does get walled off, but the Nano is scary for the Spitfire, so they end up backing off around the corner. Hardy's shatter is going to be the big turning point for this last fight. Sparker finishing off Violet with a stray helix rocket is going to be a good start. And Kaluge up against that wall from Backbone is finished off. Finn also falls and overtime is ticking through. The London Spitfire, they wipe shock, stop the payload just before that second point or third point. That was an incredible kite from the London Spitfire. You saw the nano boost get put onto San Francisco Shock's Reinhardt. But you know what London Spitfire said? Admiral, why don't you just speed boost us out of here? We're just going to go ahead and walk away. And that was a huge thing because it really forced Kaluge to go too far forward. And then you had Backbone be able to stop the Reinhardt, put up that Maywall. And then oh, just like that, San Francisco Shock was down two members. And so London Spitfire able to stop the payload. And now it's their turn to attack. And boy, oh boy, does Hadi on the Reinhardt look way better here on Eichenvalda. Ready. Looking a lot cleaner, and this is what the question I had, Rose, coming into this series, was where were we, where were we going to see Poco, mm -hmm. and where were we going to see Hardy? And I thought maybe on control you'd have an off tank for the flexibility of playing Doomfist, Diva, Zarya, for example. But sticking with Hardy throughout, that's a beautiful shadow. Somehow Finn does not <laughs> get down there, and there you go. I pointed it out when it happened, but Hardy blocking that sound barrier from hitting the monkey. Just so perfect. And then Sam just goes in. The beat already comes down. He gets one slash off on uh, onto Landon, but finished off so quickly. Like Genji's aren't what well, they used to be, you know, way, way back when original Overwatch was released. Like hitting crazy kills. Like they're pretty easy to focus down nowadays. People have gotten a lot better at the video game. But going back to my point about Hardy, it's good to see him on the Reinhardt. Definitely his best hero. And on these kind of maps, uh, kind of perfect for London Spitfire. They, they are really mm -hmm. uh, favored in these situations. Absolutely. And just trying to hit a, a sleep dart, though, to kind of stop the pressure coming in from the London Spitfire. We actually saw Hadi go quite low there, able to get back up onto his feet. Oh, big nade, maybe. Oh, huge nade. Big nade. Hits Admiral, forces lamp. Another good pin from Hardy. Kalush does get out in time. That leap still on a rather short cooldown, but that doesn't mean London Spitfire can gain a lot of space. Sam also dashing back, going low, but yet again, another fat anti from Finn. Hardy and Avril glow bright purple, and that's go time for proper to go on the flank. My goodness, Finn is good. Finn is super good, and the other thing that's been really, really good from Finn is just also how much healing he's been able to get off of Kaluge. You allow the Winston to go in, save your cooldowns to be able to jump away like we saw during that last skirmish, and then Finn just gets fed ultimate charge. Whether it's from the bio grenades, whether it's from that healing, Finn already has nano. That's huge. 
could just kind of, you know, donate that over to Kaluj, see if Kaluj can get that Primal Rage up and running, or you've got it ready for a proper tactical visor. <laughs> what? What is happening? Okay, okay. Four-man <laughs> goon squad going off to kill Proper, and Hardy's on the flank. All right, he never thought I'd see that one coming. There's the Nano on to Kaluj, bumps his little head on that mate wall from Backbone. Good kiting right now, just from a mate alone. Sam also dies, the shock, missing DPS, and just missing players altogether as Violet also gets chased. There you go, Finn. He's dead, eventually. The London Spitfire with <laughs> I didn't expect Hardy to be on the off angle there as the rest of the team chase down proper, but that's what you need to do. Yeah. You said it earlier, Rose. They've got to contain proper. Having four men speed boost towards him, that's how you do it. I mean, the other thing too, Hardy kind of just plays his bait there. You see the Reinhardt and you pretty much class They must be there, yeah, right? Yeah, they've got to all be there. No way <laughs> that they're going to be going after Proper on the Soldier. But Proper is back. Proper still has that tactical visor and also has the high ground. So really nice sight lines onto the London Spitfire. But woo, be careful. It's a lot of damage. If you fire those healers rockets and then start firing the bullets, sometimes it does end up looking like a one shot almost. If you get a couple of headshots mixed in there. Tank battles. Ryan versus Winston. Winston just Tesla cannon through the shield. Yeah. Always looks funny. Tactical visor from Spark are available, but with the high ground the shock have. Prop is going to be much deadlier. There's the Blizzard. See, instantly everybody just kind of leaps away. Not a problem. Can get out of there. This is the hardest point for London Spitfire's comp, without a doubt. You can see how difficult it is to push round, and maybe this is the strat that they need to employ. Just take the high ground away from the shock, using that Ryan shield to gain all that space. You have to, or else Proper just gets free rain onto your team with the Soldier 76. Yes, okay. Or... Proper's still in the turret, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> he was just chilling. Oh, Paco did not expect that. Neither did the rest of the London Spitfire. They're building up a lot of ults, to be fair, but this got pretty tough. Oh, that does land. Landon very close to going down, but he's good. London Spitfire gets a walk in with a lot of ultimates here. With Backbone's Blizzard, I think at this point you're not expecting to find value in the form of eliminations, but more so value in the form of space. But it also created a lot of space for Hottie to go in with the... Well, the yep. Shatter? Hit the Shatter. And uh, Proper is using Visor on the high ground. No kills in the kill feed just yet. You see this? <laughs> yeah, run, please. Please run. Finn, there's someone behind you. Addy, a little bit scared of Finn. I would be too, to be fair. He's got a lot of utility. Nano available. Nano blade for Sam. He dashes straight to the backline. Insta killing. Land and Spark are dead. Backbone two. There's Admiral. Another 5k. No! Proper steals it. Come on, man. Oh, you're supposed to give him the clip. <laughs> Sam, though, still with four kills. Nice work. Shock still making it impossible for London to push through onto this second point. Or just near the bridge, to be fair. Two minutes remaining. Less than two minutes now for the London Spitfire to move to the third objective. And San Francisco Shock actually used a lot there. So for London Spitfire, they feel like they're in a good position economy-wise. They still have the window. They have the tactical visor. And that amplification matrix in particular could be really big to push the San Francisco Shock away and create some space. There it is, but yeah, once again, Rose, it's used. It does gain a little bit of space, and they need to just continue this pressure, but Landon, oh, they're uh, proper. Rather brave. Oh, dearie me. Oh, at least they trade, though. Admiral can't really speed a sleeping person away, but can finish off proper. Sparky used the visor on the low ground, doesn't find any, but again, builds that space that Hardy can use to push that payload. Finn ends up going down. He was on the first floor, then now back to spawn, unfortunately. Kaluz has found Landon, and uh, if they do manage to find this kill, Hardy's going to be in a whole world of hurt. There is 50 seconds remaining. The London Spitfire are still gaining ground. Kaluz, got to be a little bit careful. There he is. He's out. He's good. Finn is back in action. But all of those ults used to get the payload a few meters, they're going to need a little bit more than something, a uh, little bit more than that. They are. And Kaluz also is taking this really important high ground where you can just get a popcorn. You can just walk off of the high ground to be able to do a little bit of Tesla oh. cannon damage under the London Spitfire. And also, holy nice purple Finn. Pretty good. Earns himself a nano off of that. Yeah. Uh oh. No, don't approach that corner, please. Okay, we're good. 
Nano, Kaluj, proper, has Visor. The Blizz is going to use to stop Kaluj getting a lot of damage down, but another giant purple onto Landon will sentence him to death. A big shadow onto proper, dips behind the wall, but Sam's there to save the day. Overtime is here. Admiral on the payload, but he's going to get cut up pretty quickly if Sam's got anything to say about it. A blade to spare. The shock now up two maps against the London Spitfire. London Spitfire starting to get their act together on this map, but San Francisco Shock continue to look like a well-oiled machine while they struggled a little bit in their attack push through that second point. They take the map and Sam, I mean, almost a 5K, almost a 5K there with that Dragon Blade. Good stuff coming out from them. I know Johnny was hyping him up on Twitter. Sam is looking so, so good. And hey, they've still got a monster on the on the bench too. They've still got Kilo. Shock, are they going to finish this up with a 3-0? Or will, will London bounce back? We'll have to wait and find out after this break.
I know there's some crazy artists out there. Whether it's a picture of your favorite team, favorite player, or photoshopping Mitch's head as a grapefruit, you can share your fan art celebrating the teams you want to take home the win during the Overwatch League uh, opening weekend. To be featured on the fan art gallery is a good time. And uh, I love seeing that kind of stuff on my timeline. So yeah, go over to that website and uh, submit your stuff. Right, back into the game, though, Rose. The Shock, they're up 2-0. Okay. Yeah. The London Spitfire, they need to come back. And can they do it? Maybe. Because look at that handsome guy in the center of your screen right now. Poco is stepping in for Hardy for the next match. Gibalta is the one we're heading to. We also have a sub on the San Francisco Shock side in Kilo. So, one sub for each team. We'll see if London can bite back here. Gibraltar, that's a lot of dive. Maybe mm -hmm. a little bit Doomfist for Poco? Maybe some Diva? Yeah, I would love to see that. Welcome back, Poco, to the Overwatch League. Poco has historically been an off tank, most well known for his Diva play. So, Diva definitely on the cards for Gibraltar, especially with all the verticality that's on the map. I think Diva, Doomfist make a ton of sense off of base of off of what we saw yesterday. But also, I'm just kind of interested to see how Poco melds back into the team. You know, Poco and Christopher were on the Philadelphia Fusion together, Christopher being the coach of the London Spitfire. And so maybe that existing synergy might play a role here as we do head into Gibraltar for our Yeah, exceptional map. point. Although, to caveat though, Rose, Poco didn't play in 2021. I know. He was stuck in Visa Hell and just kind of oh, like watching his team play and I'm like, I please, just please, one game. <laughs> just get me in. Like it's such a frustrating time for a player I can imagine. And Poco not playing on the uh, the main stage, if you will, for that long. Has that or will that affect him coming into this season? Of course he's had a long time to play Overwatch 2 and scrim with the team, but we'll see how that does end up haunting him later in the season. Doesn't like they're going to be running the Zarya. Okay, so Sparker, Widowmaker, I love to see it. Yep. And we are seeing Poco on the Zarya holding that high ground and bubbling Backbone when he inevitably tries to dive in off of these nades from Landon. Well, here's the other thing that is interesting to me too. Landon, Landon on the Ana. You know, Landon is not super well known for their Ana play. And I was wondering whether or not we were going to see this pick come out from the London Spitfire at all with Admiral Landon really being known for that Lucio and that Baptiste. But Landon looks like they're gonna show us a little bit of that Ana flavor. And hopefully they can live up to what Finn has been able to do to them. Oh man, you have to reach for the stars if you want to reach for someone like Finn. Kilo versus Sparker, though, on the Widow duel. Ooh, that helpful ping system. Showing exactly, oh my god. Nice purple onto Backbone from Finn, starting the game off rather strong already. Oh, nice bubble. Doesn't quite get the headshot. Kilo now just pushing the payload in the zone. I like Arna play, uh, Widow playing on the low ground here. You can grab onto height if you need to. So one of the only points I'm like, yeah, actually not too bad to play Widow. Just push the payload a little bit and try and get some weird off angles. A very sad zero energy Zarya. There you go. Charged up just a little bit. Has another bubble, but we've seen a lot of Zaryas not willing to use them too uh, too quickly because that cooldown could be quite uh, that cooldown is quite large for both those bubbles. Server control currently in favor of the San Francisco Shock. Poco doing a fair bit of damage, and Kaluj is on the wrong end of it. Now they can just try and kill uh, kill Finn. Those nades, I'd be scared if I was in a tight corridor against Finn. You know you got an anti heading towards you. Sparker does end up falling, but quick resets on Gibraltar first. So it will be fairly easy for them to come back. But controlling the high ground right now and just enabling Kilo is going to be the aim of the game. Kilo with one pick could really fling the door wide open for the San Francisco Shock. And that's what I love about seeing Widowmaker on attack. Can be a little bit harder on the defense. You do get the chance to slow down the attacking team. So Sparker's looking to try to do that, but that oh, also works. Early nano. Woo! That's how you kill Finn. A little right click, then a dash. Oh, Violet Lucio, Violet Lucio, he's dead. He is very dead. Okay. Well, Nano boost used. Backbone earned himself a blade. My only worry is right now that not only a shock saving 
their deep well they're going to save their dps ults but they got a beat coming up rather soon admiral's 30 percent away Shock could just beat rush this fight. Oh, and Spark is already dead. Wow, what an incredible opening. Okay, you might not even need to use the Blade here, to be honest with you. I don't think you're going to need it. You know, Kilo also has sights up and running for the team, and the fact that... Payload. You took out Payload. Ooh. Okay, it's contested. There's both... Or one blade, in fact. The beat from Violet used. Oh, goodbye. Violet just runs the opposite direction. Nice little boot. Proper finds Landon and Admiral. Almost sends uh, the rest of the team to the spawn there. Another nice grenade from Finn. And that will be proper wrapping up this first point with a nice little bow on it. Three minutes and 40 seconds as point eight is unlocked. And because they were able to kill the supports that late in that fight, fairly late, they, uh, they're they going to be back. Oh. That was nice. That was nice. Oh, that's so satisfying. Oh, man. Watching good Widowmakers, especially without the double shield, is so satisfying. Yeah. Oh, the sound that they get when they hit the headshots, too, and they get those one-shot kills. Also incredibly satisfying. Sparker really trying to keep things together right now for the London Spitfire. Really needs to start getting some picks. You know, Kilo really, again, on that attack, has been able to just get some momentum for the San Francisco Shock. Oh, nice grab, Finn. Oh, no, that sucks. He got anti himself, so uh, unlucky. Landed with a nice little nade and follow-up damage. One person grab. Still, though, look at the control that the San Francisco Shock are exerting right now. Kaluj on the payload, already got it to a second almost, and uh, the rest of the shot are just harassing Landon on at the high ground. You've got to be careful because Kilo is just peeking over that. So aggro, look at that! He's like right next to him. You can reach out and pat his little head if you really wanted to. Nano on line. I can imagine they give it to Backbone once again to try and kill Finn. There it is, straight into the back. He's already used his dash. Can he get the reset? Nice deflect. Finn so low, but the boot from Violet will send Backbone flying and out of the picture completely. A Primal Rage in the airship is not going to space, but Admiral's going to spawn. Landon dead on top of that. The San Francisco Shock are going to clean house. And the London Spitfire defend point C now. It's their last hope to try and stop the Shock. I mean, they did it before, to be fair, on uh, on Icavaldo, so Maybe the same situation occurs, but again, look at the space that they're taking so early, Rose. It's all about the mobility that the composition that the San Francisco Shock are running really provides to the team. Kaluj also just plays in a very aggressive style Winston, which works out phenomenally against a comp that the London Spitfire are running. They don't have the same type of mobility to just get away. They heavily rely on Admiral to do so. Taking out Violet, though, could be a really good start for the London Spitfire to stop this momentum that the San Francisco Shock have created for themselves. I I don't mind that, though. If I'm the San Francisco Shock, you burn the enemy team's blade, but then you have a blade of your own plus beat, mm -hmm. plus nano. Like, that's more than okay. No. There's very little pressure on your backline then. I mean, maybe Spark attacks Finn's head off, but that hasn't been uh, the most successful thing ever. There's the nano. It's on the Winston, in fact. No nano blade. Kaluj now pushing everybody back. Nice bubble to try and stop the healing from going on Poco. An anti-nade from Landon will send three purple on the shock, but an instant beat with the blade. Dashing into spawn is proper. Poco, Admiral dead. Ooh, big old kill streak too for the Genji. And with two minutes to go, London Spitfire need to touch. They got sights, they got grab, they got nano. Can they do it? No, they cannot. Another boop from Violet will send Landon flying, unable to touch, and there you go. Round one completed, time in the bank for the shock. The London Spitfire with rather an unremarkable hold on this game. It's been very tough, and you look at the history of the London Spitfire in general, Rose, we, we talked about this a little bit earlier on. They didn't have a good lit year last year, and we are stepping into a brand new version of Overwatch with only five players now on the team, and you're thinking maybe this can be a new start. Same with the Shock, almost, right? I mean, they yeah. had a championship winning roster, and Violet is the only player left on that team, but proper Kilo, Kaluj, like Finn, these are all players that have been touted for the league for quite Ready. some time now, and you can see exactly why. They've picked up championship caliber players off the get-go. They absolutely hmm. have. But I think we have yet to see the full form of the London Spitfire. London Spitfire has also picked up quite a few role stars, especially when you take a look at Admiral. You know, Admiral does come from the British Hurricane, which has some pretty good history with the London Spitfire. And 
British Hurricane does have a tendency to also pick up Roll Stars from the European region, and so if London Spitfire wants to go with an almost complete European roster, this is, is the great roster that they could put together for Five, this four, season. It's three, not looking two, super great for them one. right now, but this is still only the first match of the season, and we also have yet to see what they're going to do on this Gibraltar attack. Yeah, that's it, right? It's still the first match of the season, so, you know, times can change, that is for sure. Time is a linear path. I stole that from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to, yeah, when you said that, I was trying to think about, where have I heard that before? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know who. Can't credit, can't source, unlucky. <laughs> well. Unlucky. It looks like a very similar Ooh. composition coming out here from the London Spitfire as they ran on the defense, but maybe it'll work out just a little bit better on the attack. Widowmaker can be yeah. super, super oh. important. <laughs> it felt like maybe they could run... Oh, wow, that was close. Uh, it felt like that maybe they could have just run Kilo over there. He was just alone, but the London Spitfire more than willing to just take server room over anything. I think Payload's okay. moved a fair amount. Sparker. Finishing off Vida with a little cheeky headshot. Run Spitfire, their, their aim of the game here is to just try and take control of the server room. They've done just that, but like getting the payload moving, pressuring Kaluge to do something else has been uh, really the ideal way to play. Backbone gets anti and finished off, but Finn ended up going down. Sparker very much carrying the team from the back uh, from the background right now. Sparker has to put some pressure onto Kilo. Though, and I think one of the other reasons why the London Spitfire is taking over the server room is because it really does negate a lot of Kilo's sightlines onto the team. And if you can take out the rest of the San Francisco Shock, then you can save Kilo for later. It'll be all right. Maybe. You don't really want to take a double headshot of your Poco. That will end your life rather quickly. There's the Nano. Can they finish off Finn? He's naded himself, so that apt healing from Violet is going to be good. Not good enough, though, as he does fall. The blade from a proper. He's going to chase it down. Avril saves the dash. Easy kill for the Genji. And Sparker doesn't really know where to look because proper finds himself a 3k. And Holt London once more. One minute and 40 seconds remaining. Two big ults for the Spitfire. They've got grab and they've got blade. That's an instant couple of kills if they manage to pick up the support for that grab. You can even eat it downtown, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You gotta get the supports. We've seen Poco be able to capture Finn in grabs before, and Finn is definitely pumping out so much healing for the San Francisco Shock that eliminating that piece is going to be absolutely huge for the London Spitfire to make progress to capturing this first point. But Jaws, there's a minute left. That's really it. They've got to go. There's the blade. Well, they're deciding to go right now. They're not going to use the grab in conjunction with it. Nice little repel away. No way does he win that. Are you serious? Kilo gets away with his life. Kaluge helps him survive. A grab on the high ground is going to do absolutely nothing as Finn and Violet keep the rest of the team afloat. There's 45 seconds to go. And the London Spitfire threw the two key tools that they needed to take point A away. The shock continue to hold. That might just be it. Admiral does have the sound barrier, but I don't think the sustain is going to be enough. Finn has the nano. You're going to get a primal rage online. You're going to get a dragon blade online. Poco has switched over to the. Him the beat, the nano, everything thrown in to make a delicious cake. The San Francisco Shock surely take it here. There's a couple of seconds to go. Finn is dead. Actually, Kaluge falls too. Sparker switching over to the soldier at the last minute. With the healing station down, that's more than enough support to push the team on forward. In OT, the London Spitfire managed to cap point A. Huge for the London Spitfire. They made it work. And just off of the back of a sound barrier and a few picks to be able to get back to the point faster. Backbone is going to be switching over to one of his signature heroes, that Genji. But Everything this is, is where the going gets tough. Uh, Jaws two sure minutes to be able to make it through and Proper's already hit the queue. No, not where you want to be. Nice nade to land it too. And this is 
uh, kind of how you want to play watch my Gibraltar, right? Especially if you're the defending team who lost that first point, you want to just get to that high ground ASAP. Because if you let the attacking team do it, they're going to spawn camp you, or close to spawn camp you. Hilo's got the sights for this next fight too. Another key ultimate to use, especially on this defensive position, you can just spot out the supports where they're heading, and you make the play so scared. Yeah, you only have a few entry points for this second point as well. So Kilo can definitely shut down a lot of different entry points. I, I like the attempt from Backbone there to try to deflect some of those shots, <laughs> for sure. Oh. Oh. His marker's shoulder, luckily enough. Kilo does finish him off, though. There's the Nano onto Backbone, instantly purple, so has to play safe. Kaluge finishes him off. Backbone charging a little bit of the Dragon Blade there, but not enough to really mean all too much. They've got 50 seconds remaining. Landon's already used his Nano. Maybe they get another one if Poco takes an unreasonable amount of damage. Spark has got that tactical visor. Another very hard ult to use on the low ground. Man, just taking that high ground control so early just is a, is a death sentence, Rose, for point B. I almost want to see Finn use the nano boost here on Violet. You know, allow Violet to get the sound barrier and then just win out the map here. I'm down. I, I want to see it. Nano Lucio, I'm down. please. I'm just one. Or Bustios. Aww. No, you don't get your wish. Kaluz gets the nano. Sparker trying to find some sort of angle with the visor, but still scared of Finn, who's just chunking him out from afar. Land and falls. There's the primal. Oh my goodness, this is about over, I think. Unless the self destruct can do something, it explodes and finds nothing. A nice anti nade on Poco, but manages to get the remake. Kaluge is just causing absolute pandemonium in the uh, on the payload. Admiral scurrying away, has the beat coming up. He can use that if he hits Poco too. They're going to be able to survive for quite some time here. They've just got to be careful because Proper is nearing that blade. Violet with the beat too. If they combine those, it's basically all over for the London Spitfire. Backbone also nearing that bay too. Key ultimates on, coming online as overtime is here. Oh, they almost took out proper, but now if Kilo taking out Landon, this is it. Yep, feels a pretty bad. Proper so close to the blade, five percent away. Poco donates his health bar to that ultimate charge. There's the blade. Poco no self destruct to get the remake. Proper finds one and another, and there you go. The San Francisco shock with a clean 3-0 against the London Spitfire. Start the day out strong. Incredible stuff from the San Francisco Shock. London Spitfire, you know, don't worry. It was the first match for them of the season, but this is a second win here for the San Francisco Shock. And something that I think they did incredibly well was just keep the London Spitfire supports from really being able to play the game, whether it was Kaluge going aggressive with the Winston to be able to juggle away the supports of Admiral and Landon, they did it. San Francisco Shock looking really, really good to start the season. Yeah, super good. The rookies coming in and just fitting into the Overwatch League like a slice of bread in a packet of bread. A slice of bread in a sandwich, I should say. <laughs> I don't know why I went to packet of bread. Of course a bread fits night, a slice of bread fits night a packet of bread. Also, does anybody call it a packet of bread? I don't know. Anyway, Sam is your player of the match. God, that was potentially the worst segue ever. Uh, potentially ever in esports, maybe. Not sure. Sam, player of the match. What a surprise. What a beautiful blade he had on Eichenvelde. Just getting that 4K, almost a 5K. Proper did steal it. But his Genshi's looked really, really good. And I think a lot of people had questions as to who is actually going to play for the San Francisco Shock because Kilo's aim, especially on things like Soldier, is just so clean. But now we can see exactly why the Shock picked him up. These Dragon Blades, and in a meta that favors Genji so heavily, oh man, it just brings out the best in some of these rookie DPS stars. Absolutely. Check out some of Sam's statistics from this match as Genji, incredible amount of damage done, but 19.8 eliminations in 10 minutes. Jaws, that's absolutely cracked. Kind of insane. <laughs> If those, dra if those kills yesterday as well, that 5k from the uh, purple, then the dashes, yep. if that was counted towards the Dragon Blade kills, I feel like it should be at some point. But <laughs> like this guy is averaging something crazy. If he keeps this performance up, especially on Genji, this guy is looking like one of the best rookies to come into the Overwatch League this season. The Shock are looking great. London, they did 
pick up some rookies, and they have started the season rather slow. But there's still time, mm -hmm. uh, Rose. There, there really is. And I, I really do hope they do end up facing someone not quite as the caliber of shock so we can really get a litmus test on how well they're going to do this season because the roster does look rather good there's a yeah. lot of hidden talent there i think especially in players like Admiral. absolutely i am looking forward to what the london spitfire are going to be coming up to next but san francisco shock i just gotta kind of hammer it home that the rookies they yeah it's they, gonna be a ooh, it's gonna i think it's gonna be a it's tough gonna one. be a good one yeah. yeah, today's going to be a good day too. Don't forget Battle of Texas later on in the day, but we've got another match coming up for you a little bit late, uh, uh, a little sooner than that. After this break, we'll see you in a bit. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Upper Deck, the official trading card of the Overwatch League. And by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League.
Welcome to Game Break, everybody. We are here joined by Finn from San Francisco Shock. Finn, congratulations on another big win. 자, Finn 선수, 어, 오늘 승리를 축하드리면서 인터뷰 시작하도록 하겠습니다. How are you feeling? 지금 어떠신가요? 어, 되게 기분이 좋은 것 같아요. Yeah, I just feel really great about the win. All right, so this is your first year in the Overwatch League, and you are jo you guys you joined the San Francisco Shock, a team that has won the Overwatch League twice already. So I want to ask you, did that sort of put any pressure on you, or were you just excited to be on the team uh, with your uh, with your former teammates teammates as well? 어, 첫 번째 질문은 일단 이번에 오버워치 리그 들어오게 되면서 어, 센쇼, 샌프란시스코 쇼크라는 팀에 들어오게 되, 됐는데 이 팀이 또 워낙 강팀이기도 하고 두번 우승 경력도 있고 해서 좀 이런 게 어느 정도 좀핀 선수에게 부담감을 주셨는지 아니면 이제 같이 올라온 팀원들과 이, 좀 이렇게 잘하는 팀에 들어오게 돼서 그냥 기분이 좋았는지 어, 궁금하네요. 어, 저 원래 O2 블레스트에서 컨텐더스 활동하고, 활동하고 있었는데 그때도 두번 우승했거든요. 그래가지고 이제 센쇼도 이제 두번 우승해가지고 딱 이제 더 우승 많이 하면 좋겠다 아, 해가지고 애들끼리 왔습니다. Alright, so um, when I was in Contenders, I was in a team uh, called O2 Blast, and while I was in that team, we I we won the tournament, uh, we won Contenders twice uh, with that team, and. Like you guys all know, San Francisco Shock also has won Overwatch League twice. So it's twice and twice. It's sort of equally matches. So I think it was a good opportunity for me to come to San Francisco Shock and, you know, to try my best to get more wins. All right, and my second question for you, Finn, is I'm going to be honest, uh, you guys have already won two matches, but I don't think San Francisco Shock's strength was actually put to the test yet. Uh, so I want to ask you, is there a team that sort of you want to go up against that could potentially prove that you guys are one of the uh, one of the stronger teams in the league. 자, 두 번째 질문은 벌써 지금 두 번의 경기를 승리를 아주 좋은 모습으로 거두게 되셨지만 제 개인적인 생각으로는 어떻게 보면은 두 경기 다좀 센쇼에게 좀 쉬운 경기가 아니었나라는 생각을 합니다. 개인적으로. 어, 그렇기 때문에 제가 여쭤보고 싶은 거는 어, 지금 오버워치 리그 팀 중에 있는 팀들 중에서 아, 이 팀이랑 하면은 이제 우리가 정말 강팀이다라는 걸좀 이렇게 보여 줄수 있겠다. 하는 팀이 있나요? 어 솔직히 북미에서는 어, 글래디 정도? 그리고 솔직히 하고 싶은 팀은 상하이 드래곤 즉이네요. 상하이가 일단 작년에 우승을 했기 때문에인가요? 어, 네 그리고 저희 컨텐더스 때도 스크림 할때 가장 빡셌던 팀이 이제 상하이 드래곤즈거든요. 그래서 해보고 싶은데. All right. So, uh, my so I think in the West, if we if I have to choose, I would have to choose the Gladiators. I think they would potentially show or show us or show that we are one of the stronger teams if we do beat the Gladiators. Uh, but personally, I do really want to face off against the Shanghai Dragons uh, this year because not only because they won uh, Overwatch League last year. But also, uh, when I was in contenders and we were screaming against them, they were a very, very good team and it was difficult uh, to have a match against them. So, as a San Francisco Shock coming in right now, this year I do want to face off against Shanghai Dragons sometime. Alright, Finn, thank you so much for your answers and that is it for the interview. Thank you so much. Uh, Finn, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Alright, guys, let's go back to Nut Truck. Not so. What am I gonna call this? Uh, to those guys. Those guys. Those guys. Us. Those guys. Us. It is us, indeed. Thank you so much, Danny. Uh, yeah, great to hear from all the new players. It's gonna be very exciting. We have so many rookies in this very season. So, so many people to pick the brains. Like, I yeah. love, love doing that. Um. I'm having a great time. I was about to say, <laughs> I'd say us, but really it's just Danny doing no, it. So we're right? here yeah. by his side. It's moral support. We support. Yeah. Yeah. We, all, we all love talking to newer players. Exactly. Yeah. And I especially love you talking to anyone. Because uh, <laughs> this one, I don't know, some of you might not know, but he's an absolute god uh, in, in um, 
Small talk. I no. hate you. <laughs> <laughs> she means she I says, suck at small talk. <laughs> but it's so bad that it's good. It's you know, you know, it's, it's one of those things. So should, I, I, I love it. We should tell, tell that stuff about needs the, to be uh, the, haircut <laughs> the haircut stuff. Uh, you know, but we should start recording him having uh, talks with the players before we go live. He tries to like, it's not you great. know, loosen them up a little it's bit. It ain't working, but it's fantastic. It's Makes very it more awkward, but hey, I try, right? And now it's just talking like stuff they never will know. So um, either way, let's talk about uh, some you actually did get to hear and see and that is the game we just got to witness now yeah it was once again a one-sided affair however i did feel like at least on eichenwalde london got it together a little bit we did see some some you know some light uh, there on the london spitfire but it's it's still the san francisco shock they're going up against and it's unsurprising that uh, the opposition would struggle a proper yeah it's just He's having a great old time. Like he's done exactly what we expected him to do. So he was not overhyped coming into this league. He's, yet. Uh, not yet. Fair, but I want to hype him up. I want to gas that boy up. And, and he's, he's done a <laughs> splendid job so far at looking really aggressive, really oppressive to play against. Yeah, he, he's really living up to that hype so far. Obviously, as we said, he hasn't played against one of the better teams that we expect in this season, but he's been doing everything that he's needed to be doing. He has been absolutely dominant. You could see the London Spitfire really struggling to deal with him on this Soldier 76. London, they they were heavily leaning into that rush brawl style with Hardy on that Reinhardt and trying to move as a unit. But Proper did a phenomenal job of just taking those off angles and challenging them and making them have to turn around and deal with him. So there was some, you know, bright spots on Eichenwald when they were able to play that style and without being flanked effectively. But as soon as the shock sort of worked out how to adapt, it, it, it all fine, kind of fell apart for the London Spitfire. And, you know, Finn... Listening to him talk, you can really see the impact that he's having on these matches in this B-roll. The number of sleeps and high-impact uh, bionates that he's hitting in the matches is just incredible, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. Who else stood out to you guys? Uh, anyone else who really impressed or didn't impress? We also saw the first look on Poco again. Yeah, uh, right. That's been a hot minute. Uh, how do we feel? I mean, obviously, he was not being put in, a, in the best position to, like... You know, have a good first showing back, but still. This eye was good. Like, I, I like yeah. the look of it. It, it. it goes back to the idea of, like, the matchup just doesn't feel that yeah. fair. You know, the San Francisco Shock is such a stacked roster. They, they had some moments of brilliance when they were able to play slowly within that server room. You know, Poco looked really good. But I think they were struggling to deal with the speed that the San Francisco Shock were playing. So... I want to see more from the London Spitfire against some other teams. We know how good the Shock are, but we don't. I don't think this is a great test for where are the London Spitfire. I don't think you can see this match and be like, yeah, they're going to go 1-15 and 15 again this season. I think they had some uh, bright spots, and I want to see more of them against the, I guess, lower-end teams. So, San Francisco Shock. Yeah. You guys like Sam Genji better or Proper Genji? Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Proper or Sam Genji? Don't Just wanted to throw choose. it out there. What do you guys think? Don't make me choose my favorite child. <laughs> right, let's move on. No. It's um, a good question. I, I, I'd go with proper. Yeah? I agree as well. I, I, agree. I think he has a more aggressive and oppressive play style, which is just very neat. But you can't go wrong. Yeah. No, no, I mean, yeah. they're, they're both fine. Right? They're both great, right? They're now. both great. Everyone's a winner. That's right. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, uh, we do have another match coming up for everyone. This was just the first one. It felt like a quick one, uh, that too. So let's see if the second one can be a little bit closer. We will be seeing the Vancouver Titans uh, taking on uh, the Boston Uprising. So, uh, yeah, let's let's dive straight into this. Uh, Danny, starting with you, who's your player to watch out for and why? I mean... I think the most, uh, the biggest story that's going on right now for Boston is the fact that Striker is back on the team. For those of you that didn't know, Striker started his Overwatch League journey with Boston Uprising. That's where he made his name on that uh, on that tracer, um, and then he moved on to San Francisco Shock, had great showing, and then he won the Grand Finals twice with the team, and then now he's back home, back into the Boston Uprising. I wonder. I'm pretty sure whatever the team needs. A Tracer player, I think it's going to be Striker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also, a quick factor here, it's been 1,393 days since Striker's last match as a player with Boston Uprising. But who's counting? Right? Yeah, no one's counting, Where except for us. Where did you get this? 
I, 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 <laughs> research is that? I saw a you count the days? Noah. So you so count it together. You hook days, me so. up with that one. Like, this is, this is great. <laughs> but yeah, I personally also, Every of day. course, <laughs> kept track of it. Yeah. I have a whole wall with it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, who are you keeping your eyes on for this particular match? I'm excited to see what the Vancouver Titans are going to do. This is a, a roster that's changed heavily from last year. They have sort of obviously once again did not have a great season they also went 1 and 15 but they picked up a lot of great players and I think you got to look at the DPS lineup if you're going to really look to see where the power is going to come for this roster Shockwave coming back to the Vancouver Titans he was there on the 2020 rebuild uh, he went on to Philadelphia Fusion unfortunately we didn't get to see him play that much so he does have a couple of question marks around what level of performance is he going to be at but he is a very flexible player and standing next to him as well, we have Aspire, who was a 14-day a contract that seemed to never end for the uh, <laughs> Toronto <laughs> Defiant. Yeah. But he was, he was just so strong for that right. team, that tracer, that hit scan. He really made a big name for him. And I think a, a lot of the reasons why so many people are hyped up for these North American talent, you know, rookie talent coming into the season this year because of how dominant Aspire was. So seeing those two players line up, they have great flexibility. What are they going to be able to offer for this Vancouver Titans roster? Because they are really trying to impress the fans. Unfortunately, Vancouver Titans have been not great for the last couple of seasons, and they need to break that mold. They need to come in and be like, hey, we're a force to be reckoned with, because they have a lot of rookie players coming in as well, especially in the back line. So I'm excited to see more from them. Yeah, everything to prove, but nowhere but up for some of those teams. So I'm very, very excited. I love to see teams completely switching it up, having a completely retooled roster. I think that just yeah. makes the whole thing very exciting, makes it also really, really hard for us to predict. So we look like fools sometimes, and that is okay. <laughs> no better time Half for us than right. do that. Exactly. Uh, and I mean, I know that there are the social media people are already calling us out on our picks. Sorry about it, but we haven't seen we haven't seen. Prove us wrong. Prove us exactly. wrong. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah? Just Im Im impress us. Yeah. That, that's that's all we want. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an exciting match to be witnessing, and uh, we're about to re to be ready to head right into that one. And for all the action, we're going to hand it over to another new squad on our Overwatch League Woo! team, and that is Lemon Kiwi and Leg Day. Take it away, guys. Woo! Let's go. Oh my god, the cheers! Thank you so much, so we are the gang uh, from the van. Uh, this is my son, Leg Day. I'm Lemmy Kiki. Hi! Great voice. <laughs> if you call me mommy though, I swear to god I'm gonna block all of you. But we have an amazing match. For those who don't know who Leg Day and I are, we cast contenders. Where that's a place where you get to develop all kinds of talent. When I think of two teams that have been incredible at developing talent, I think of the Vancouver Titans versus the Boston Uprising. That'll be the match we're covering today. Yeah, Vancouver and Boston Lemon, they've both done a really good job of harvesting from contenders to rebuild teams that kind of need a little bit of a kick to get to where they want to be. Yeah, uh, it's no that secret that well. Vancouver yeah. Titans, as for Desk, brought up, of, uh, they've not had a good, good couple of seasons. Since they lost that runaway core, things have been languishing a little bit, and so it's almost a full rebuild here from the Vancouver Titans. But they're going up against Titans in the form of a couple of the names that are on Boston Uprising, which you're going to be able to take a look at in just a second and there is one that everybody who's ever witnessed competitive overwatch knows and that is striker a titanically terrifying tracer player and a hit scan menace to boot on things like the widowmaker striker back on boston uprising is going to be the final boss that needs to be dealt with by vancouver titans Man, if you thought Boston had some firing power, they have such a large roster, they brought the whole army for this match. The fact that they have three choices of tanks is incredible. Boston, uh, Marvel, It's Al, Punk, uh, Punk as well. And I'm excited to see who's going to be starting us off. And it will be Punk, the young superstar. And I know he's been on Boston for some years, but I, I remember back in my day when Punk was in contenders and he had such a supportive family around him and he was up and coming and we knew as casters that this guy was gonna make the league, but we were surprised to see him start over Marvel and others when Winston, when Winston is so meta. On the other side, when it comes to the veterans to lead these teams, Lemon, look no further than Marsa. This guy has been in this league almost since its inception, I believe, four seasons deep now, and a second place finish last year. Marsa definitely has the pedigree to really be able to lead a team to victory, especially from that main support position. And in this current meta, when you want a Lucio who's able to get up and start fragging, you don't have to look much further than the Finnish fury of Marsa. 
Yeah, I gotta bring that veteran ship to this team. A lot of rookies on Vancouver, including False, who is the only choice of tank, quite literally, for Vancouver. And I know there's been some talk about what False is bringing to the table, but I gotta be bringing that False positivity, because when I see False on the top contenders North American rosters, American Tornado, you name it, he fits the shoe when he needs to. As in, he fills the role and he steps up and the results don't lack when he's on the roster. But now that he's in the league, he's gonna have to prove himself as the only tank now since, you know, 5v5 and all. Yeah, that is a lot on one player's shoulders. Moving on to our first map here, it's going to be Elios Lemon. And this is a map where the off tanks can reign. We've seen a couple of teams that love to play their off tanks here, be it the Diva or the Zarya, but it feels like across the league, a lot of teams have settled on the utility of Winston and particularly how he interacts with, bullies and synergizes with the almost ever-present Ana as their go-to tank. As we head into the map itself, you can enjoy the nice new sun-bathed glow that Ilios is enjoying these days. Oh, I wish I had some glow. I haven't touched grass in a while, though, so uh, at least I can feel it through spirit here on Ilios. And I love the relighting that they did on some of the maps, including Ilios, who is now all nice and sunsetty, very romantic. But we'll see what kind of love story we're going to see between two off tanks, Punk versus Falls. Now, Falls being the rookie, but Punk oh, is such a young boy. I feel like he's always going to be a rookie in my eyes, but not in terms <laughs> of skill. They're both uh, ripping out on the D.Va. Maybe. The Diva here is going to do a very good job in trying to shut down the de facto second DPS, which is the Soldier 76. But on the Boston Uprising, Valentine, who we know more as a flex player, is going to be picking up the Echo, and is only the second player to do it, I believe, after Yaki essentially became a average Echo enjoyer yesterday, and accounted for 100% of the playtime on the hero. On the other side, Striker, we talked about their Tracer, but also his properties as a hit scan menace and looking to try and reassert themselves as a true domineer of the faction. Well, I really like Striker's positioning. He went right to the point. Playing Soldier, you always want to have those type of off angles. And look, they surrounded the Titans, got them low enough where Valentine could get this focusing beam out. 6v5, false is slept, and he was trying to dive Crimson there. So already great peel, but also you've got to be really careful with the timing on your Matrix when trying to dive in Onyx. Those sleeves will just ruin everything. The real difference in his composition, though, Lemon, is going to be the Lucia from Marsa, and this needs to be used to help Vancouver Titans get on top of a much slower Crimzo, who's going to be relying a lot more on Punk to play a classic off-tank style that's heavy on peel rather than heavy on dive. Punk almost losing their mech, though, with a chase from False, and Vancouver Titans are going to be able to flip the point early here. Yeah, Boston just wanting to recuperate, and the point is really exposed, so I understand but the preference around holding the high ground. So we'll see how they make entry as Boston already approached. It's the battle of two divas. Punk is going to try and connect there with Crimson and even Faith for some heals, because uh, with the old charge nerfs, it is a little more difficult to get back into Meg as it was in Overwatch 1. But point control for the Titan Psycho slices through Crimson, and now he's trying to dash up to go after this diva, maybe even Faith, who has to use Valkyrie for the extra mobility is able to get that res off on the crimson and that's big and important you have so much more healing now available for boston as a self-destruct from falls just on top of the high ground easily dodged there by fate just allows for a quick remake and that was valentine who's been the recipient of a nano boost the spire can't take the pressure but the sticky bombs do provide and now a duplicate is good to go for valentine to cleanse himself if need be but first port of call is going to be that duplication that's a good attack by so just to finish off the job. Remember, it was Boston all along that had the point at the start. Vancouver Titans zoned them off, got control, and managed to stagger things out to 50%. Now, Boston at full force. We get to see what new Echo looks like, because I felt like it was only Yaki on day one that really used the Echo at all. I love continuum of value there from Boston Uprising as well. They give the nano over to Valentine to beam down false, which they can't eat. That amplification, that amplified beam can't be broken, and that allows for a free use what? of attack visor afterwards. Well, Valentine decides to duplicate the Ana, so maybe two... <laughs> I would say, okay, one nano. Crimson doesn't have his yet. But we're going to give that over to Punk, who's going to dive straight for a Spire who has attack visor. All attention has to be demanded on him as Punk flies to Jupiter, tries to mech someone, he gets Psycho with it. And Boston only has Fate heals, which uh, Fate is still coming back from spawn. So Boston, it's just a matter of time before this crumbles. Punk legitimately getting pocketed by two Annas. That's pretty cringe, bro. Save a Vancouver Titan. So they try to once again take over the point. Punk has to sacrifice their mech. But now the Brigitte has arrived. You've got to be careful of Marsa, who's looking for boots. A sprint keeps Striker in play for now and forces out Marsa and that sound barrier. Boston 
keeping control just by a few seconds, even without having any supports for the longest time. You see Crimson and Faze just trying to cross over to the point, but no one from Boston is helping them making that journey. So Vancouver finally get the flip and at least only 30% gap in the score. Psycho here does have a blade available. And the question is, do you want to wait to try and combine that with the Nano Boost? It's a little bit more tempting at the moment, Lemon, because Vancouver Titans aren't using the classic Winston, which we expect with these compositions. And Winston's a very tempting target to give that uh, Nano Boost over to. So I imagine we're going to see just a little bit of poke eating to allow for Skirifer to farm up this Nano. Well, Psycho has a blade, and he says, come at me, bro. Let's see what you got. Then Boston, well, you still don't want to get close to that Brigida of Faith. Who's he trying to peel for? He's up in the window. Psycho can't climb. He's only four foot tall. He goes after Crimzo. And really, it's not. Psycho's not connecting on anything. And he's biotic grenades, so really can't get more aggressive than that. False going to clear up map control for the Vancouver Titans with the self-destruct. And as everyone tries to cross, it's chaos on the field. Oh, Boston, what do you have left? Crimzo with the Nano. Boston still standing tall as the Titans fall one by one. And we almost have a 99 to 99 in our first round. The locomotion was a little bit dodgy there from Psycho, and this forces out the Echo. In contender, Psycho known for the Echo, known for the Farah, very much an airborne threat as Vancouver Titans will make a mad dash to trigger overtime. And that's exactly what will be done as Psycho and Fox establish themselves from a point of script against a clutch sleep here. Oh, both supports were dove, but Skyripa had the most critical sleep, and Crimson falls to a big resource advantage for the Titans in the last fight. Faith under fire. Psycho wanted the finish, gets distracted as Faith heals himself up, probably with the support passive, as Punk tries to matrix everything he can. Psycho flies back to his supports. It's an all-out brawl on the point, a 2v2 even as the rally. The overhealth into effect for the uprising, the resources they need to keep on kicking. And there the round ends for the Uprising, who stand tall over the Titans. And there it's Faith, feet planted firmly on the ground, popping the rally, giving that additional health, which made it so much more difficult to find real purchase with things like the Focusing Beam, which does four times as much damage, 50 to 200 when you move onto a target that's below 50% health. We have ourselves a pause here, Lemon. So this is a great way to point out that Vancouver Titans I know that we're one stage into their season, or, or one stage of a control map into their season. But one of the things that's really enthused me in this first stage is that we've seen people like Skaripa hit a clutch sleep. And that's something that I think that Vancouver Titans didn't really have before. They didn't have much of a clutch factor. When the chips were down, previously we saw Vancouver Titans kind of fold. And another interesting lore tidbit about the previous season of Vancouver Titans against Boston Uprising is that I believe their only win last season was a 3-0 sweep over the Boston Uprising. So Vancouver Titans were kind of their boogeymen. Boston Uprising, for some reason, just uninstalled Overwatch when they were up against Vancouver Titans, who, by all metrics, they should have absolutely stomped. I mean, a lot of people are favoring the Boston Uprising, including the desk, including our armchair Reddit analyst over yonder. So it, it was actually quite close, 99-99. But when you bring up that support play, I do agree that there was an important clutch factor of Sky Ripa uh, living longer than Crimso at the end. But what ended up being a, a big tie turner was Spades swapping to Brigida halfway through that lighthouse map. And you would think Brigida is kind of this knee-jerk reaction to Tracers and still the truth in Overwatch 2, despite the lack of stuns and the fact that Rally is overhealth instead of armor, which is inherently weaker. Uh, but Fate still managed to have that AoE heal so that Boston could have stronger fights on the objective with having this like single target business happening. And Faith could protect Crimzo a lot more, which gave Boston the, just that extra edge at the last seconds of that of that fight because Faith had a wonderful rally that kept Punk going at the end. Hold up. Wait, Wait a, minute. a minute. London, <laughs> your game is over. What are you doing here? Vancouver Titans. They're hovering the old May Rhine rush at the moment. And one of the things here is that Aspire might be able to play independently as a pretty Pogger's Widowmaker. But the thing is, the healing that Aspire can get is going to be pretty heavily relegated to health banks. It's going to be very difficult for Skaripa to hit those long-range healing globules. On the other side, Boston Uprising, they can run into you with a Zaya and a Reaper, and they might find themselves a 5 versus 4 while Aspire is elsewhere. 
And Aspire, it, it, a lot of people think this is a Widow map and there's great sound lines for it, but it's easily countered by the way Boston Uprising at least were positioning, which was on that corridor that Sky Ripper was currently sitting on because that blocks a lot of the line of sight, but they've decided to go back and swap the composition. Tell me about this Doomfist. Well, Punk's here looking to get multiple slows as well. And remember, the slows are given out by the Seismic Slam. That is going to allow for Striker to very easily close these gaps, but Psycho has closed up Striker's head for a second. That's a great opening pick to grab. And Boston Uprising, they're going to lose out on multiple fights here. I mean, they already gave up the first capture in order to swap over to that Doomfist for the initial engagement. Yeah, May is a sniper, by the way. <laughs> but also for you non-aimers, May is way more fun in Overwatch too because her primary fire now doesn't freeze, but actually does a lot more damage. She still has an inherent slow, which is going to enable falls on the approach. But in the last series we were watching, we saw the brawl with the May and how it doesn't work out. But we'll see. Valentine applying pressure, gets help from a friend, and slices and dices two Yo. and three. Boston took the time to swap the call and look how it's paying off. No way they do that 4v5. This is one of the things that the Overwatch 2 tech beta has really shown us, Lemon, that no longer does the first pick matter as much. Sure, it's a power play, and you can really start to leverage those picks, but 4 versus 5 is so much more doable from the clutches before in a 5 versus 6, because with only one tank no one that could be easily outmaneuvered side? by DPS that are 10% faster, it's much easier to try and find the squishy underbelly of a team. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get shots on the Crimson, because he's hiding exactly where you need to position against Widows, where you have the most cover on. It's just a little tough for Crimson because he also needs to see his teammates. So they have to just adjust their positioning as Punk gets a little too close to the sun, punching into a small room. The ice blocks stand in his way. The point control is still for Boston as a nano was delivered to Punk. And that was enough really to ward off the Titans. They're missing Psycho. And Aspire, unless he gets a big pick or falls, has a lot of energy to turn this around. Boston can still hold. I've got some really good short leap tech there as well, which we'll talk about after this fight in particular. Striker has expended his Bardic Pad and may now decide to follow in Punk, who at the moment seems a little bit happy to just hold back for a moment, wait for a spy to be clocked onto, and in the back it's Valentine with the blade! Ah, oh, clocked on, yeah, TikTok, and you're dead, Vancouver Titans falling as Boston will take a lead, and that's the type of initiative I love to see out of Valentine was on this roster before, and you can tell the confidence grows when you get to play beside someone like Striker. All right, so I want to talk about shorts, about the short slam that Punk did here with the seismic slam, where you basically do it in place and still bring out the shockwave. It's better at Doom Tech, and it means that Punk has been practicing a lot of Doom Fist, which is something we kind of anticipated because Boston Uprising have three tanks on their roster. It's Sal, Marvel, and Punk. So we're expecting some specialists from this team. Ah, and you're expecting a sleep when you dive in on it like that, and that's the danger of playing Doom. He's playing at an off angle, but couldn't get away from Sky Ripper. But look at the follow-up. As soon as Punk gets on his knees, Boston help out their buddy and that's synergy I love to see 94% Boston taking a fight you got the touch ready from Masa but reinforcements ain't coming for a while buddy good luck all right Masa for one man battle royale but I'm afraid that there's gonna be no chicken dinner for you son there's Venano on to Valentine and I'm afraid February 14th is a while from now Wow, 99%. Boston finishing what they started. They look close on Lighthouse, but the compositional swap from Boston, and especially Punk stepping up to the table and learning Doomfist. This is incredible what Boston are doing right now. They take map one. A proactive reaction as well. To give away that first cap on Ruins to swap over to the Doomfist is really enthusing in that it seems like Boston Uprising have some very strong in-game calling and leadership when it comes to compositional swaps. And that is something that you've got to look for in a couple of team rebuilds to make sure that they have the confidence to abandon what previously they thought would be their best chance to win the game, which if I remember correctly was Punk being on Zarya to try and bubble the Reaper. But they decided instead they wanted the additional reach of the Doomfist, and Boston reached in and grabbed themselves a map win, Lemon. Yeah, Boston looked really good in terms of how they were diving, but most importantly, when Punk was down, Valentine was there to back him up. And then Striker, he still do be striking. So Boston take game one. It's a first to three. We'll see you guys after this break.